Hey everyone, this is Chris Grasso with the Where Is My Guru radio show, and today I am very, very honored, to say the least, to have our very special guest with us, Ram Das. Ram Das, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. So, namaste, namaste, all the people listening. Absolutely, namaste to you. So, in the introduction uh, to Polishing the Mirrors, you write that the path of the heart is not hard or easy, but it takes time and intention. So that being said, in retrospect, is there something that Ram Das, today, author of Polishing the Mirrors, would have told Ram Das, the author of Be Here Now, back in the early 70s, that may have saved him some unnecessary difficulties or struggles on the path? Or is it really all, like you say, just grist for the mill? <laughs> um, well, in the, um, this isn't, this secretly sort of my own worries. Um, the, when I, when I, when I visited with Maharaji, when I had the darshan of Maharaji, my guru, and I, first of all, was, was blown away by his, his powers, his cities. And um, that was about the time when Be Here Now was coming up. And now, I, I, and I, it was at that, in that station, there was, he showed really unconditional love to me. And I didn't, I ignored it. I mean, I, I, I reacted to it, but I ignored it theoretically. And I, I was so caught by the city. And now, now I go back and I, so the, the, the real, the real, uh, defining moment of my life was when he looked at me unconditional love. And I really, now I'm ready to receive it. I think love was the undercurrent the miracles were were food for my 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 mind and the love was food for my heart for my for my spiritual heart my my soul. And that that's what this polishing the mirror to live from your spiritual heart. Because It's 
like we have two, two beings in us. We have the ego, which is, which is in the mind, and that's who we think we are. And then the soul, who we really are. So it, it, so this book teaches us teaches us to find who we really are. Yeah. Something else I really appreciated that you wrote in Polishing the Mirrors. Uh, you'd written that each of us has our own path to follow, our own karma. You have to honor your own unique path. You can't imitate someone else's trip. So how does an individual, especially someone new on the spiritual path, go about doing this? How do they honor their own unique path? They, they, they find the, the intuition, their own intuition. Nobody's going to tell them those outside of them, but they, they, why, I mean, uh, somebody's a big guru and, and his devotees are telling you about his, his powers, but he, but in your intuition, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. And like, for example, um, when you start in Hatha Yoga, and still it's drawing you closer to God, but, well, I guess I med I'm meditating now. I think I should not meditate. Then the path of the various yogas is really your intuition, which one to choose. And it's through meditation that we quiet the mind to get in touch with this intuition? No, it, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. So something I found to be really beautiful is how important you, your books, your lectures, documentaries, audio programs, and so forth have continued to be for generation after generation so important. I'm in my mid-30s and can say you've easily been the greatest vessel through which I've personally received this transmission. Um, a heart transmission, I guess you could call it. And I know plenty of other people around my age, some even younger, who are just deeply impacted by your work, by your books and so forth. Why do you think your teachings have been able to transcend decades of material and cultural changes and are still so relevant to seekers today, as I'm sure they will be for years to come? Well, there are many answers to that because my guru 
gave his ashabad or blessing to my writing to be here now. Uh, that that's one positive thing, and the other um, that I. Um, that I sampled all the paths that are around. I sampled uh, psychedelic drugs, uh, psych psychedelics, um, and really s saw that they they uh, pushed me onto my path of, of, of spirit. And then I went to India and sampled all the different paths. Um, and Because I'm a Westerner, I bring them back to the West. And because, because I, I, uh, I, um, I, uh, am a scientist, a Western scientist, uh, behavioral scientist. Uh, and I, I put, put that hat on when I'm, when I'm uh, discussing the spirit and then the spiritual hat on discussing the 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 uh, discussing uh, science uh, and I think I'm I'm old. <laughs> I think I'm old. <laughs> Most of the people that I that were I I, I by, are gone. Alan Ginsberg and uh, Alan Watts, uh, people who would be in this role. But, but I'm still in round. I'm just, just, I'm an old dog. Well, is there anything, being the old dog that you are, would say to the younger generation of spiritual seekers that are coming up? Is there any specific message or words of wisdom that you would impart on them? I say that they, uh, um, This culture is uh, intrigued with um, with iPhones and such, and the 
they have to look within and and it's hard to look within when the pizzazz of the culture and, and it's tough to be in in to tough to be a young person in our culture um, because they get pulled outward because because there's no uh, because the, the Things are uh, available for them, available communication, sex, drugs, um, and unless they they use their their awareness to go into there, to go in to find find their inner guru, inner guru, they're not going to, to, uh, not going to get from, find the true spiritual, yes, true spiritual self. Uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the 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 word love is what is used in many ways. Uh, but the love is a comes from your soul, not your ego, and Even, for example, uh, making love is sexual, sexual behavior, but the one, if you stop with appreciating the sex, then you're not really making love because love, when they, when people get together, when a couple come together, uh, they'll be, the, the sexuality is, is, uh, It's sparkly, but then we'll be keeping pushing, pushing, pushing for the love that's behind it. Yeah. Something I'm personally curious about is with so much time and, and experience, uh, on the spiritual path in your life. Do you find there are things in life, whether personal or impersonal, 
that still frighten you. Sure. That still frighten you. That for whatever reason, yeah, that frighten you. Either personally or impersonally. No. No. I, I'm frightened because because things that I don't understand then I immediately say that I don't understand and then I surrender, I surrender to my guru mm -hmm. and I say, I say, my life is in his hands and therefore let him worry about it, not my worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, Fear is the ego's uh, problem, yeah. and the it's, it, it's fear. Once you start to transfer your identification with to 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 your spiritual heart center, it's, it's much more love than fear. And that, by, and that is just so impressive. It's just that, that I, I want to, I, I want to, I want to shake this, shake this culture and get them to just that, that shift in identification mm. from ego to soul. Do you feel like that's happening more now than it has been? Yes, 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 yes. What would you attribute that to? Well, Spiritual, yeah. it was a, it's a spiritual projection, uh, um, um, a spiritual evolution. And then um, communication. For example, you, the news makes people from all over into your consciousness and there is one we 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 are we are one we in, in spite of 
uh, nation states and their ignorance and religions the spirit comes up and after we We can't live with us and them. We've got to live with us. Us, which includes them. And it becomes so, so evident, evident that the world would be a far better place to, for example, the, the religions go in, I think, my 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 guru held up a finger one finger he went one one god one god one god and I I follow my guru. Somebody else follows Muhammad. Somebody else follows Jesus. Somebody else follows. And we've got to give everybody their right to choose their the things they follow mm. and and then because to the, the those those beings that they're following are going towards the same same pinnacle of the of of the mountain. Right. And that's it. now and that's the new the new new age religions recognizing the pinnacle, the one, the one, because the one incorporates the two, incorporates the many. That's why there's, that's that progression. Yeah. I was particularly fond of your Paths to God book and how you dialogued with Chogyam Trungpa and, you know, at Naropa and, and that was so beautiful, you know, that there it was, right there what you just said and how I wish I could have been there to see that, but it's beautiful <laughs> to read about it afterwards. So thank yeah. you. That was very, very special. Yes, I could only imagine. <laughs> yeah. So I just have two last questions for you, if that's okay. I know uh, we're getting close to running out of time. Thank you so much. Um, the first two last question is, I, I really appreciate how you talk about suffering as grace. 
Um, you know, it's the first of the noble truths from the Buddhas. There's suffering in life. Um, but And you talk about it in Polishing the Mirror and how it's, it's grace. Um, and I was hoping you could talk a little bit how we can, if you could elaborate on that, I suppose, and how can we take these undesirable things in our lives and begin to work with them and, and see them as grace? My guru, I remember a very a, a, a woman came to to, to, to Darshan, and uh, she she said no problem. She said. Um, she said, I'm, 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 she said, my, my, I'm suffering so much, Maharaji. I'm, my whole life has been one of suffering. And she was so self-pitying and so on. And, and, and he said to her, you know, he said, my suffering brings me so close to God. And if you, it, if your if your goal in life is not, not suffering, that's 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 a lot of nonsense. But if your goal in life is to meet God or to enlightenment or something, things like this. Um, then you look at suffering. They are, um, it's suffering is, 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 uh, is, uh, Stepping stones going towards God. My example, my stroke makes me very slow in my delivery, but Stroke, most people said, you, you must, you, you have a stroke, isn't that too bad? And I looked at my guru in my mind, in my mind, in my heart, and he is, he is. Maybe that's grace. Maybe that's grace. And I thought, that's crap. And now that 11 years of stroke, that I, I, that was a stroke, was starting a new chapter of my life. Because instead of, uh, instead of spending time running around my sports car and my, my cello, 
and my um, playing golf or things like that. I, I, I turned inward. I turned inward because of the struggle. And that was really, wow, wow. last thing I wanted to ask you is, so when I found out last week that I was going to be doing this interview um, from Raku, I, I, got, I opened my email and saw that it was confirmed, and I actually cried uh, over that. Uh, and I don't cry a lot. Um, <laughs> and I cried. And it, uh, it immediately brought me back to reading Be Here Now when the first time you went with Bhagavan Das up to see Maharaji, and he just fell and started crying and you didn't really know what was going on and but then you were talking to Maharaji later on and he talked to you about your mother seeing her and that was the first time you talk about him kind of cracking your heart center open in a way and then you cried and uh and then actually it, I also thought of it when you were talking with Abby in Fierce Grace at the end of that documentary and she was talking about her murdered uh boyfriend and when she talks about that dream where he talked to her and how he was saying something to the effect of it's all just part of the bigger love. And to see you just, you, you broke down in tears over that because it was something connected in your heart. So my question is, what, what is that? What, what happens with that? You use the word connected the heart. Yes. That, when I ever see compassion or real love, really spiritual love. It's uh, um, I'm seeing I'm seeing in my environment the things that I treasure in my soul mm. and. And it's like I couldn't believe it. I, I, it's connecting me. It's connecting me with my soul. Mm -hmm. Now, like what happened with Be Here Now. Gave, Maharaji gave me Ashurban for my book. <clears throat> That's Ashurban blessings for my book. And he was sitting on his uh, tucket. Uh, and here he got just blessings. And then that book opened millions of people's hearts. That's what his blessing did. And, and <clears throat> it, it became it became like um, uh, a, a hippie Bible in, in the 70s, 60s, 60s. And <clears throat> he did it with just that. And yet, I'll come up, uh, people come to me and they're caught in their egos and they 
and they taste the essence of their their soul and they go they flower it's like in a field of beautiful flowers they, they bloom they bloom they bloom and i i get oh my wow wow that's that's crying in my It's like when Thich Nhat Hanh says, may our heart's garden bloom with hundreds of flowers. That's what that makes me think of. That's what, that's it. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time. It, it, it means so much to me. Uh, and thank, thank you for everything. I'm sorry I have to be speaking so slowly. Oh, please don't apologize. It, <laughs> it's the transmission comes through loud and clear. Good. Yes, absolutely. Um, and really quick before I say goodbye, my wife is here, and she would it be okay if she said hello to you for a second? I'd be happy. She would love to. She loves you almost as much as I do. This is my wife, Jen. <laughs> hello, Hi, Ramdas. Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> it's an honor. Oh boy, <laughs> this, this has been. A very heartful interview. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and like Chris, you've you've influenced me so much on my path, your books, your words. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him what he I see him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank oh, you. Boy. Thank you so much. Um, I will get the link to your assistant when we're ready to run this. It'll be again on August 2nd, the day after your publication. Um, okay. And I want, to, I want to bless your book. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> And that that came through from the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Well, <laughs> I will gladly take that. Wow. Thank you so much. And my publishers won't mind hearing that either. I'm sure. Ah. <laughs> uh, if you uh, if you need a, a blurb, send me a copy of the book. I gladly. No. Okay. Oh, I absolutely will. Um, it, actually, we're finishing up edits next week, so I can send you the rough uh, manuscript. And uh, all right, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. To be. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Thank you so 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 much for everything. I love you so much, and I appreciate your time. And where do you think that love comes from? That yeah. comes from where it could come from. Yeah. And that's, that's loving. Loving is just pulling us, pulling us, pulling, pulling us into the spirit. Yum, 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 <laughs> yum. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, that's you. wonderful. And I'll be sure when your book comes out, we'll, we'll, get the word out as much as we can on our end and and I wish you the best of luck with it and I just for humanity that that people read it and for the bettering of our our life thank you so much okay thank you for this interview my honor my honor <laughs> she's still here I'm still here thank you thank you so much <laughs> Oh, namaste, Ram Das. Namaste. Namaste. Be well. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much.